In this video, I'll show you a simple setup procedure for Keyence's SZV series of safety area scanners. The scope of this video is geared towards getting a new unit up and running in a time efficient manner, and we'll cover the parts in a complete SZV setup, the settings to be configured, and the process of drawing protection zones. A complete scanner setup consists of five parts, the scanner head, the display unit, a system memory module, a power cable that connects to the display unit, and a connection cable that runs between the display unit and a scanner head. Be sure to only use the SCV series with a 24 volt DC power supply. After powering on, you can connect a USB cable from your computer to the SCV via the mini USB port on the display unit. The SCV series must be set up using the safety device configurator software, which can be downloaded for free on keyins.com. When opening the software, make sure you select the SCV software. From here, you can read out the configuration of a safety scanner connected to your computer, create a new configuration file, or open a configuration file that is saved on your computer. If the SCV you're connected to has already been set up, you can monitor the operation or check the detection history directly from the screen as well. Create a new configuration file, then specify what model scanner you're setting up, for example the SCV-04 with only one scanning head connected. Now we're in the configuration software, and I want to spend a minute getting familiar with the layout. The three tabs at the top allow us to switch between configuration, monitoring, and the history checking functions of the software. This is the configuration part of the software, and the tabs you see on the left will guide you through the different steps of the setup process. The unit configuration tab contains logistical information like the name of the configuration file, the department you work in, or responsible personnel. You can retroactively read important configuration data off the scanner from this menu. Also at the top, you can increase the number of scanning heads used in your setup in case you need to expand in the future. In the operation tab, this is where the bulk of the scanner settings are configured, and they can be summarized as so. General safety configuration, detection settings of the protection and the warning zones, and advanced functions that the scanner is capable of. In the general safety configuration settings, you need to select whether the scanner's output operates as a PNP or NPN output. The interlock setting determines if the scanner automatically resets after a hazard leaves a protection zone, and you can also tell the scanner to perform external device monitoring, which might be helpful if you're connecting the scanner directly to a relay or a contactor. The protection zone settings determine things like how quickly the scanner will detect an object and how small of an object the scanner can detect. Changing these settings will affect the configurable area as well. Most of the same settings can be adjusted for the warning zone also. Under the Advanced Functions section, Reference Point Monitoring is often enabled when the scanner is used for access protection or mounted vertically. This function tells the scanner to reference a specified point in its field of view, for example a door in its closed position, and the scanner will turn off the safety outputs when the position of the reference point changes, i.e. when the door opens. The Multi-OSSD function enables a separate, independent protection zone to be configured on the scanner. Enabling this makes the scanner capable of monitoring two separate zones simultaneously. The bank switching function allows for multiple zone configurations to be stored in the scanner's memory, and by sending external inputs to the scanner, it's possible to switch from one zone configuration to a different configuration. This is often used on AGVs, where the varying speed of the vehicle requires varying protection zones. The muting function can be enabled to selectively ignore part of the protection zone by controlling inputs into the SCV. A good example of this is when the scanner is looking down onto a car manufacturing line. The SCV can enter into a muted state where a car is allowed to pass through, but if a person approaches the car, the scanner will cause the process to stop. Next we can enter the zone tab to start drawing the protection zones of the scanner. Before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to go over the general layout of the screen. Up at the top, we have tools that control how the canvas looks on the screen, whether it's zooming in or out, or rotating the direction the scanner is facing on the screen. A favorite tool of mine is the camera button, 
which allows you to see where the protection plane is relative to the environment using the cameras equipped on some SZV models. On the right hand side, we've got all the tools used to draw or erase parts of the zone. And underneath of this, we can select which zone we're currently editing. If you're setting up a scanner with multiple heads, there will be tabs on the top left of the screen to switch from head one to head two, for example. When begin beginning to draw protection zones, one advantage that Keyence offers is the automatic drawing tool. Here's an example situation from our warehouse, which is protecting the area around a conveyor. Once you start the function, the scanner automatically adjusts the zone to what it sees. After After completing the process, I typically trim off the edges to make the zone just look a little bit smoother. Other options for drawing zones include freehand drawing, entering coordinates, importing XML files, or overlaying dimensional images. All of these options can also be used to map out a warning zone. The warning zone can be tied to the status of auxiliary outputs for extra functions such as turning on a stack light when somebody gets too close to the protection zone. Once we're happy with the zones, we can move on to the others tab. The most useful functions here are the ability to assign auxiliary outputs via the drop down menus and the ability to view a wiring diagram that is up to date with the changes made in the software. If your scanner comes with a built-in camera, you can choose between an image or a video that is saved whenever a detection event happens. This marks the last step in the configuration, so we can click on the transfer button. We'll need to enter the default password of 1111, or just four ones, to be able to transfer the program onto the scanner. The password can be changed, uh, and if you do change it, please be sure not to forget it. There will be a settings report that you need to look through and at the bottom of the report, select accept. If you're happy with the zones, the transfer will begin at that point. Once you're all done transferring, it'll prompt you if you want to begin monitoring. And this is a sign that everything was a success and your SCV is now all set up 